Deborah Lee Baldwin, author of three books about succulents and how to grow and design with them in outdoor living spaces, landscapes, and containers. In this video, you'll see how I've paired my most treasured succulents with pots that contain and frame them. You'll get great tips on how to display and enjoy your own collection, including how to select pots, utilize sight lines and focal points, keep your priced succulents healthy, and much more. Pay attention to how your deck or patio looks when viewed from inside your home through windows and glass doors. Focal points are what the eye is drawn to, so aim for pleasing repetitions of color and texture. Now I do have how-to videos on pairing succulents with pots, as well as how to plant or refresh a succulent container garden. This new video is about the results, not just for one pot, but for dozens. Actually, there are 70 on my 250 square foot deck. I mentioned succulent names, and I also have a website gallery for you with labeled photos. Of course, a few large pots would have been less fussy than numerous small ones. However, we succulent collectors invariably have a lot of small pots, each showcasing a single specimen. It's possible to get the same effect as large pots with groupings. One secret is to elevate some of the pots. Don't fill every square foot of your outdoor living area. Here, guests like to go to the railing and look at the view, so I make sure there's ample room for them to do that. The deck has Trex flooring so that moisture from pots doesn't ruin it like it did a former deck made of wood. Or maybe I should say I ruined the previous deck. As recently as 15 years ago, there was really no good way to provide air circulation beneath pots other than pot feet made of terracotta or glazed ceramic. Sure, they worked fine, but they cost a lot. Nowadays, there are numerous options that are inexpensive, non-slip, and don't show, made of everything from cork to solid rubber. What I don't recommend are pot saucers. They catch water that drains out of the pot, supposedly to protect the floor. But they also trap moisture beneath them, can leave rings on flooring, and by keeping soil soggy, may cause succulent roots to rot. You can also pick up inexpensive pot stands at home improvement centers, and that's a great way to elevate your pots as well as protect your deck. I used contact paper to protect a wood shelf along my kitchen window. If a pot comes with feet that elevate it, consider it a bonus. This one is by Mark Meradian. I place small potted succulents where guests will see them when seated. I want the plants to be so interesting that even people who aren't into gardening want to know about them. A little whimsy goes a long way, so I try to keep it understated. I like to have head planters appear to interact with each other, but subtly, lest it look silly. In the Buddha pot are Echinopsis cacti that have colonized over six years, and in the Amusing White Pot by Jane Beale is a newly transplanted Dudleya multicaulis from Mountain Crest Gardens. I positioned three plants so that morning sun makes them glow. They're a Monstros cereus with orange spines, a papery spined tephrocactus, and a head pot with a tephrocactus cutting. On the tabletop is a variegated Haworthia limifolia spiralis from Rojas Succulents in Fallbrook. The striped texture of the pot repeats the stripes in the plant, and the pot's circle frames the enchanting spiral. This Cedaveria Letizia has been in this spot since 2018. I weighed the pot with stones so it wouldn't tip over as the plant grew. To show off how its stem curves, I positioned it upright against an unusual rock. The result is a focal point for guests sitting at the table. You may be sitting with your back to the view, but I guarantee you'll enjoy looking at this wavy crassula. It's in a second-hand vase with a hole I drilled for drainage, and it holds a subspecies of watch chain. Crassula imperialis has larger leaves and stems than common Crassula muscosa, which is nearby in an undersea-themed pot. 
This undersea composition in a wide, shallow turquoise pot from Todd Holloway of Pot Incorporated includes dwarf aloes that suggest sea stars, Haworthia coarctata, Haworthia attenuata, a large Tillandsia air plant, and on the right, a whimsical fish pot by Alicia Iraclides of Potted Arts, planted with tiger jaws, Focaria tigrina. These Echeveria pots outside the dining room window are a grouping that visitors never fail to comment on. This potted garden, which includes large ruffled specimens, has been there several years. It just gets better and better. This year, I added Echeveria arctic lace, a new introduction from Altman Plants at Oasis Nursery in North Escondido. If you grow Echeverias, You'll want to watch my video on how to repot and refresh them. To enhance visual continuity throughout my collection, I cover bare dirt with a top dressing, usually of warm toned pebbles. If you live near a rock supplier that sells retail, buying a 20 pound bag of pebbles is much cheaper than ordering online. I also used glass marbles to add a little extra bling. They create curiosity without being too flashy. Chartreuse is a good choice for a royal or cobalt blue pot. This plant's stiff pointed leaves suggest an agave or yucca. I lost the tag, so if you know what it is, kindly let me know. Near the edge of areas in red pots is a rose red and cream glazed pot by Regina Fernandez of Port Town Pottery. The Senecio I paired it with blushes a similar shade of red. Some of the best succulent pot artists also collect succulents. Because they create pots for their own plants, they have a good sense of scale, proportion, size, glaze colors, textures, and how the pots will look when grouped. These are by Pots by Patrice. They hold crested cacti, a rare Calanchoe rhombopelosa, and Allo Castiglionier. I find lizards endearing, so when I saw this pot at a show, I had to have it. It's by Allison Myers Baldwin and holds a small gasteria bicolor from Mountain Crest Gardens. Isn't this fuzzy Echeveria setosa amazing? It's the same sky blue as the container I dropped it into, a pot by Joe Wuchik. Also by Joe is a pot I planted with Kalanchoe tomentosa and its cultivar, Chocolate Soldier. This one holding a feather cactus, Mammillaria plumosa, was a Mother's Day gift several years ago. Water drains through gaps in the Legos. If you make something similar, keep in mind that white plastic deteriorates in sunlight. I keep this cherished pot in the shade. I routinely rearrange plants to protect them from summer sun or winter cold. I give them more exposure during rainstorms or collect rainwater in buckets. It's essential to be aware of each plant's light requirements. Here, succulents facing east are the most exposed, so they need to be tough or situated so they're protected. Yet they also need enough light to thrive. I often say I don't talk to my plants, but rather listen to them. For example, I've already had to move this pot of Aloe Castelloniae because it told me it wants bright shade only. It was getting too much sun and it stressed from bright green to brown in a matter of days. I've used a wide, shallow celadon green pot to display a collection of dwarf aloe cultivars. They're challenging to protect from sun scorch, especially in summer, while also giving them enough light to color up. Every few weeks, I'll rotate their container a quarter turn for balanced sun exposure. I may also move it depending on how the little aloes respond to sun throughout the year. My goal is to get them to stress to shades of red and orange without burning. I planted this terracotta pot with a pair of Gasteria palansii. Located on the west side of the post, they may get less sun than they'd like. Given more sun, they'd redden, but there's also a risk of sunburn. These cuttings of Euphorbia green wayi are from a plant that's thriving in a different location in minimal sun. So I put the cuttings in what's basically the same sun shade situation on the deck of the pot. It's a one-off by Mark Rafter, 
named Spike. Jade can handle anything but frost. In the lower garden, it might collapse in winter, but here it benefits from the home's radiant warmth, and the more sun it gets, the more colorful it is. Close to the east railing, for the same reason, is sedum orange glow. I planted it in a pie crust rim terracotta pot before I noticed a large crack. I guess I'll wait until I find the pot in pieces before replanting it. East facing is ideal for this perfectly stressed bright red aloe dorothea that I dug out of the garden and potted. I'm hoping it gets enough sun here to keep it from reverting to green. From a design standpoint, it's effective to group like with like. Euphorbia horda, formerly Polygona snowflake, does well for me, so I've clustered my specimens for maximum visual impact. I splurged on the rippled pot in the foreground because I liked how it repeats the ridges of the euphorbias. These graptopetalum cuttings are newly planted in a terracotta pot that I bronzed and embellished decades ago. It's also featured in the new graptopetalum page on my website. The turquoise color of the wide shallow pot atop a metal stand repeats in a glazed pot that holds Aeonium lily pad. Aloe Delta Lights is amazing in a pot striped with those same colors. Next to it is a variegated Haworthia in a similar smaller pot. Echoing the grouping's pale yellow green is a round shallow pot of Gasteralos, and among them I tucked retro metal candle holders from a second-hand store. They're vertigree palm tree fronds that have the same shape and color as the gasterallos. I'm always aiming for a double take. In a tall turquoise glazed pot by the late Don Hunt, a newly transplanted Luchemburgia principis. It's a cactus, but looks like an agave with spines on leaf tips. The pale pastels of the recently beheaded ruffled edge of area look perfect with a tall terracotta pot. After the rosette grows more roots, I'll plant it in a smaller pot that I may tuck into this one. That's one way to avoid wasting soil. I won't fill the entire pot, and the edge of area doesn't need more than a gallon. A cylindrical pot, also by Don Hunt, holds a string of pearls. A necklace of green glass beads adds a bit of whimsy and fills gaps. I had the good fortune to bring home a potted Haworthia truncata from a San Diego Cactus and Succulent Society holiday drawing. It was planted and donated by fellow member and friend Jeannie Meadow. I took advantage of vertical space provided by a floor-to-ceiling post. On three of its sides, not the east side, which is too sunny, I attached flat-backed wall pots, also called sconces. They're small and shallow, so I planted them mostly with cuttings. On the shady side are Sansevierias and Talansias, as well as an oddity, a Graptocetum that's thriving on the tip of a shriveled, pendant, 12-inch stem. This thrift store candle holder is just right for a narrow space on one side of the kitchen window, and it holds small pots perfectly. I hang feeders for finches, titmice, wrens, and nuthatches. If I sit still long enough, they ignore me and come and go. The feeders are ornamental bird cages. Not only are they decorative and stand out because they're white, people do a double take when they see wild birds eagerly entering cages. This jade had gotten top heavy, so I strapped it to the deck railing. I'm not a fan of plastic, but large black nursery pots call almost no attention to themselves. It serves as a blind, so birds who visit the corner feeder, like doves and jays, feel less exposed. I water with an expandable hose that doesn't take up much room. I water on average once a week. It depends on the size of the pot, the type of plant, and the weather. On my website, you'll find information on pests to watch out for and what to do about them. Mealybugs tend to be a problem in the fall. In spring, I fertilize lightly. In summer, I drape echeverias with shade cloth. And in winter, I set pots out in the rain. Year-round, I deadhead spent flowers 
and remove dry leaves. And if a plant is not looking as good as I'd hoped, I move it to my nursery area, a shady side yard where plants either make it or don't. Maybe I'll give you a tour of that next time. Find additional information in the video description and on the corresponding page of my website, which includes helpful links and a gallery of plants, all ID'd. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living spaces. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.